Hello, ladies and germs. I am sick. Unfortunately, I got heat stroke on Friday when I was out doing some tower work. Uh, problem with my body is, is that I don't feel temperature the way that normal people do because I have had heat stroke so many friggin' times. Um, that's unfortunate because I love being outdoors. And on top of that, I have a really bad bout of poison ivy. Anyway. I digress. So, rather than doing anything that it takes any kind of intelligence today, which I'm sure you guys will disagree and say, well, this you have to be pretty clever to do this. It's just like, yeah, whatever, fuck it. Anyway, so, Saturday and Sunday this week, this is Sunday now, is uh, a Sarah day. I'm just doing stuff I want to do. So one of the things I do, uh, I'm doing right now is, is that uh, I have to pay for my electricity now. So, uh, being at the lower tiers of the social ladder, I want to make sure I can serve as much energy as possible. So. What I've done here, check this out. So these are all the chargers that I use. So we've got our uh, camera battery chargers here for like lights and uh, camera batteries. Um, this one here is for specifically, uh, this is for the uh, batteries for my Sony cameras. And this is a general battery charger for 18650s, double A's, anything else like that. So I use these batteries, particularly in flashlights or in my uh, uh, microphones or things like that. These ones for battery or for lights and for cameras, and these ones are specific to the camera. All right, so I've also put a little watt meter on top of here to keep track of things, and I've added a nice little uh, barrel connector here. So the concept of this is that I can stick this in the truck, I can charge batteries on the go. Here at home, I can simply plug in a 12 volt, three amp charger, or as I'm gonna demonstrate today, I can charge these batteries, these Dakota lithium batteries, yes, because they are good batteries, and I can charge them with these. That's right, cheap $30 solar panels you can get on Amazon. I think I paid pay 50 bucks actually for them, but anyway. So two of these will produce eight, hour, uh, eight amp hours within a day. Um, so these are producing uh, 20 watts over a five hour period. That's 100 watts divided by 12 volts equals uh, 8.5 amp hours. So that's pretty much enough to, uh, uh, well this is 120 watt hours. So if I added one more of these, yes, I have a fucking stack of them sitting next to me by the way, I'm not joking. Uh, <laughs> I bought them for an experiment that I never completed because my ADHD is a crippling illness. Um, so I can do three of these guys and definitely assure that I can charge one of these in a day. This guy here now can charge all these batteries numerous times over. So like, uh, I'll show you a couple of common batteries that we use. Um, so, uh, let me go over to my battery bucket. So this is a little six cell. Um, this one here is 58.5 uh, watt hours, okay? So I would consume most of this, and this we use on lights, okay? So this is typically for lights, or you can get adapters to use these for your cameras, which is basically what I've done. Uh, in addition to that, we've also got these smaller guys, which I use all over the place. In fact, this light right here is running on two of these guys right now. So this little guy here is only uh, uh, 2200 milliamp hour. Okay, so if I do the math here, hold on. Uh, 2200 divided by 12 volts. Uh, watt hour divided by 12 volts equals, no, that's not right. I'm doing that wrong. Oh, that's 2200 milliamp hours, duh. So 2200 times 7.2 equals 15,840 divided by 12 equals, no, that's still not right. That's not, okay, so I think that's a hundred, no, no. My math, see, I'm sick. This, I can't do the fucking math. Okay, so we'll go, oh, 2.2 .2 amp hours times 7.2 volts equals, 15 watt hours, K, okay. divided by 12 volts. So I can charge this in an hour and a half by these solar panels here. So that just gives you an idea of how long it takes to charge things, right? So the idea is, is I take this out in the yard, charge it, and then I can bring it in the house. And I've got a couple of these, by the way, and then I can charge all my batteries solar, basically. So a lot of the stuff that's in here is actually running on solar, technically, because I'm catching the sun out of my yard, bringing the batteries in, and then just using it to charge and run stuff. So it's a uh, kind of an interesting way if you're living in a metro area or in a city where like, you know, you don't, you're a renter and you don't have the ability to go off grid, you can charge stuff. So it's basically just charging your batteries in the yard, bringing them in and making nice little kits for them. Like these little guys. Actually, I'll show you another battery I've got here. This is a big mama battery. So this one here is 12 volts, uh, 20 amp hour. Um, this will be, you can charge it off of that as well. So I mean like this one here is like, uh, I think it's twice the capacity of this one. So this guy here, I can take it on in the yard. I made this set of recycled laptop batteries, by the way. Bring it in and then charge it. But anyway, I digress. So let's, let's go over here now and see what I'm doing. Okay, so what am I gonna do this in one take? That'd be pretty cool now. Okay, so I'll just uh, bring this 
up, I guess, like so. And this was actually like this, but I can actually go like this. So you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Now I'm gonna take the hood off of this light and I can actually adjust it around. There we go, that's way better. Okay, so I think you guys can see what I'm doing now. So what I'm gonna do here is I've just uh, got a couple of cable cutoffs that I just made, that I just made. What did I do with them? Oh, here's one. So I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna tin these and I'm gonna solder them on here to these connectors. And I'm gonna daisy chain these. And then this first set is gonna come off as um, one of these little guys. I'm gonna do one of these little EC5 connectors. And then that way I can I can put two, four, ten. I'm gonna pair them up in sets of two. Um, just I thought that would just be convenient and easy because the idea is as well is I don't want this to be ugly. I don't want this to sit in my yard and look like shit. All right, so let's first start by uh, releasing the holding clip here. Now you don't really need a charge, charge controller for this either because you might be thinking to yourself, well, you're gonna have to like have a solar charge controller and then, like no you don't always have to have a solar charge controller These guys only produce 600 milliamps. They're like they're less than an amp So I mean like you can just use some blocking diodes So I've got some high current blocking diodes here in my bucket of fucking diodes I mean I, I'll just use these ones. These ones are good for about four amps I think so we'll just use a couple of these guys here and so with your diode the ring goes in the direction of the current flow So I'm just gonna first add this little guy here like so uh, this little cable, this is just some old lamp cord that I had lying around and it's, uh, it's the right diameter to fit underneath these uh, connectors so it kind of works well. Let's see here, let's tighten this down a little bit. I want to put the screw for that one. See, this is just me having a day. I'm going to make a few videos today, just some electronics videos because like people do enjoy them, believe it or not. I know that all of you guys really love my, my networking tutorials and stuff, but remember, before I did networking, I've always been a, uh, a technician in the uh, DC side of things, right? So. This is kind of my passion. I mean, networking is my passion too, but not nearly as much as DC systems. I mean, I just like making things work, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna grab some solder here. I'm gonna grab my soldering iron. We're gonna tin this wire first. I'm just gonna get on here. Actually, I should bring this over so that I can, there, clean that up. And there we go, tally ho. This is just lamp cord, but sometimes it doesn't stick. Okay, so I'm just gonna, oh. Wow, I've got the temperature set clearly a little bit too high there. All right, we we'll got it down to 390. I'm gonna grab a set of tweezers here and grab my my thingy tweezers. These, no, oh, no, my thingy tweezers. I'm just gonna bring this around like so. I'm just gonna get this conductor down on here, the negative on the negative side here. I'm gonna bear upon that, by the way. I'm gonna throw my uh, blocking diode on here now. So I'm just gonna trim this little guy down. I keep trying to put it up there. Here's my shop scissors here. So I'm just gonna. I'm gonna tin this. See, I keep reaching up to grab my soldering iron over there. I'm kind of a meathead. Um, I'm gonna really goober this. I really want this to stick. And I'm gonna stick some uh, heat shrink over it. There we go. All right, so we've got our diode on there. Okay, and now I can just bring it back like so. But first, before I do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of heat shrink on here just to uh, ensure that we don't get any kind of shorting or contamination. Get some blue heat shrink. No, oh, I think the green will work. Does the green work? Green will work. Okay, so I'm gonna cut off a little piece of green here just because I like green. He thinks there's an Amazon delivery. Literally just now. Hmm. Those little guys are like fucking ninjas. I swear to Christ, you can't even hear them. Oh yeah, we came to deliver. I'm like, I, I look at my window here and I see these guys come and it's just like, clearly that I didn't hear that guy. All right, there we go. I'm just going to uh, trim this back just a little bit. There we go. And then I'll put some fresh solder on here. Now the purpose of this is just to make sure that you don't get any back feeding. Um, so with the blocking diode method, it's a very simple method. You're basically uh, binding the solar panel itself to the uh, battery, which means that uh, you can actually draw these down. So if you've got a, um, like at nighttime, if you don't have a blocking diode, the um, solar panels will actually produce infrared light. They're LEDs, they're basically like TV remote LEDs. So these guys here can produce infrared light and they can uh, draw your batteries down. So you have to be careful about that. I'm gonna get on like this. I'm gonna get you in there. I don't remember ordering anything today. Let's see here. It's really being a pain in the butt to get this thing in. It's this, uh, this uh, tie down here. Seems just a little bit tight. Can I get you on now? I'm gonna have to just Pry it up just a tiny bit, I think. There we go, I got it over. Push this down. Got to make these little enclosures so tight. There we go. Okay, so there's our first panel. So panel one is now connected, and we can test this simply by uh, putting a multimeter on this. Make sure that we get our 12 volts output. Where are my aggregator clips? There we go, I found a set. 
So I'm just gonna put my uh, negative and positive on here. I really need to order some new banana connectors. I've destroyed a bunch of these. Just gonna clip this on like so. And this light should be enough to verify. Yeah, I'm getting 13.9 volts. Neat, eh? So there we go. So that's the first panel. I'm gonna prep the second one. Now this one I'm gonna do a little bit differently because I need to have a tail come off of here to connect to my uh, my charging system. So I'm gonna strip these guys back a little bit. Yeah, that's right. This is some, some of the stuff that I really do for fun, believe it or not. Ha ha ha, isn't that weird? Aren't I weird? Now before I do this as well, I'm gonna make sure I put some heat shrink on here so that uh, I can bind these. Like we're basically gonna dress this before we put it together. So I'm gonna make sure that the leads are about the same, like so. And same with these guys here. And I'm just gonna tin these guys to make it simpler to uh, work with. There we go. Alright, so we've got that. I'm gonna grab some heat shrink here. Uh, I might have some big enough heat shrink in here. I might not. I'll go, let's go to my other container. Just bought this too. This seems like some very cheap heat shrink, to be honest. I only need a little bit to buy in this. So I'm just gonna take this little piece here. Let's let these two pieces of cable through. And I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit like so. And if you really wanna get fancy, you can put a little piece of heat shrink over top of this too. So it could go like this. There we go. And now we can just heat up the whole hot mess. I'm going to take off the tip. Make it nice and easy. Just the tip. We're going to take the tip off. Oh, this is glue filled. That's sexy. All right, cool. So there's that. I'm going to take off a little tiny bit of this because we need to put our blocking. Well, I'm not sure how much I lost, but apparently my camera just turned itself off. This is a brand new camera. I really need to learn how to use these bloody things. So I'm going to grab another blocking diode here. You know, we're working with this one here, so I'm going to get the, uh, get this guy on here, and I'm really going to goober her up. Okay, you know, I know that this heat shrink is cheap, but, uh, wow, I don't think they could have made this container any cheaper. I mean, we're starting to get to the bottom of the barrel here. <laughs> like, wow. I mean, that this was cheap, but I mean, like, at least it had a proper, you know, lid on it. Cheap stuff. Okay, so let's goober this up now. Goober that up a little bit. This, um, this cable has some type of a contamination on it that definitely makes it difficult for the uh, solder to adhere, which is why flux is really important. Here we go. I'm just going to stick this on. Oop. Uh, that is the wrong... Yep, nope, that's the right direction. That's right. Here we go. Now I can actually put a little bit of heat shrink on that. And we know that we need green for that, so I'm going to grab another little piece of green. Oh, maybe it was a little too hot to put that on. And a little piece of blue. Blue is blue's nice, too. There we go. Okay, so that's done. Let's uh, solder these wires on now. I'm just gonna loosen this guy off. Okay, the gag was good, but I'm starting to overheat. Oh man, this this is a wintertime onesie. My little dragon onesie that I love so much. There we go. So I'm gonna fasten this inside of here. A cheap solar panel. I think this time I'm gonna put this on uh, and solder the one side first to give me an idea. Where's my grabby tweezers? Eh, any tweezers will do. Oh, we misorganized. Not fucking organized in the slightest bit. There we go. Okay, so that's on there. This wire is so fucking cheap. It's like all cheap, cheap, cheap stuff. But when you're doing projecty, prototypey type stuff, sometimes cheap isn't bad. There we go. I'm gonna get this little wire in here. I'm gonna put my screw over here now. Okay, so that's anchored now. Perfect. Now I can get my little cover on here. Struggle to get it on because I have to lift the uh, lip over top of the connector. This is some 100% uh, uh, Z grade Chineseium here. Like, you know what? If it works and it works effectively, who cares? I don't care if it's cheap as long as it fucking works. As long as it doesn't die in a week. Okay, this diode is probably going to have to come over here a little bit. There we go. See, like, they make this space way too small. Oh, if she didn't fit, you must have quit, as they say. That's an American term, actually. There's my tweezers. All right, cool. So we've got our two solar panels now. So now we need to make the uh, connector for the end here that'll hook up to our batteries. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of cord here. There we go. And we're just gonna use an EC5 for this. So now with uh, most of the stuff that I'm doing, I'm using the uh, male e EC5 on the battery. So we need a female EC5. Oh, excuse me. Female EC5 here for the uh, solar panels. Now remember, we don't need a uh, charge controller now because we have blocking diodes. So let's get my little bench vise here. All right. Get a little connector here. It's not odd. The camera just keeps turning off. Here we 
we go. So we've got our positive terminal. Wow, like the melting point on this uh, plastic is like 100 degrees. It's crazy. And I wrapped the paper around it specifically to help insulate it so that the uh, device didn't act as a heat sink. Now I can take my negative, tuck it in there, and that's done. Now there are no YouTube videos that show you how to do these EC5 connectors. So I have not found any way of mastering these things and how to install them, but uh, that's hot. I'm going to grab a little piece of TP. There we go. I'm going to take the heat off of that. Push both these guys in here now. And this is the part where we have to push the connector in. Alright, so I just use a little piece of, uh, I usually use that a bit. So anything that's small enough to go inside, I just pop it in like so. And then I'll use my vise. And this has worked pretty good for me. There we go, that one's in. Take the second one, just like that. You want to just double check that it's in there, just your screwdriver and just give it a little push. You usually click once they're in place, right? So we now have our uh, connector that we can plug into our batteries. All right. So let me grab a battery and I'll show you. Take this guy now. It's charging. Take it outside, put it in the sun. We're going to be able to harvest some sunshine for our uh, vlogging, vlogging production. And if I want to add more of these, I can just make a uh, little wire adapter to take multiple ones of these guys and plug them into one. All right, so that's the cool thing about these. So I'll just uh, take these two and put them together like so and put them aside. Just put this over here. And now, I need to make myself a uh, connector. This guy should be good for about five amps. This is to plug into the barrel connector on my uh, stuff, because I got a barrel connector on that, so. All right, so now I'm gonna need to go and get some uh, female male versions of these. All right, there we go. So let's uh, get our connectors on here. Actually, I'm not going to film this part because it's boring, and I want to read about why my camera keeps turning off. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so I'm going to get the, uh, the little bench vise here. Where did I put it? There you are. Let's grab you. I'm just going to... Uh... Let's just set that in there so that it uh, doesn't transfer much heat and become a fucking heat sink. There we go. I like to get the tip a little wet before I actually start because uh, it helps to uh, thermally couple this to the uh, surface, right? Typical soldering trick. There we go. So there's one. Now I should be able to tin the end on this. There we go. And I'll just uh, get this hot again and dip her in. There we go. She's stuck. There's one. There we go. So we'll just cool that one side off. And now I'll take the other one. Now the cool thing about these EC5s is they mark on the housing which one's positive and which one's negative. So I've got negative, positive. The keyed slot is usually the uh, positive one, in most cases anyway. There we go. Gonna trim the tip of that off. Cool. All right, let's get some solder in here. There we go. All right, cool. So just made our connector there. Toss these guys in like so. And I'm gonna use one of these uh, females to uh, couple this. I'm just gonna pop her in like so. I can get her in there as much as I can. There. I can get it on the edge there and I can just... There. That might be a little bit too much, actually. Oops. Yeah, that's way too much. Now I'm going to have to push this from the back. Oops. Okay, let's do the other one now. There. It's in. So there we go. I've got our connectors on there now. Tell it's right because it's still a little bit loose inside there, right? I'm going to try to fix this, though. There. I think I got it. All right. So if everything's right, we should have our positive and negative. Oh, we're coming up on five minutes. Let's see if the camera shuts down at the five-minute mark, and that's what's actually happening. That's the case. I'll be salty as fuck buying a $700 fucking camera. No, we made it past five. Good. Okay, so now let's plug this guy in. Oh, no. We have a problem, Houston. Somehow I had the uh, big ones in with the... Smaller ones. Oh. So I have to pop these out now. Fuck. Now, yeah, for what it's worth, I'll just do a brand new one. Bring up the temperature a little bit. Mm, you know what? Fuck it. Life's too short to fuck around like that. Okay, so we got the small one this time. Let's verify. Hi, everybody. Eh. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome to Miss Fix It. Hi. So anyway, 
Um, many of you might already know this, but uh, uh, I, I'm a renter, okay? Which is probably not a surprise, considering how crazy I am, okay? Um, no family, uh, no children or offspring of any kind. I have two cats. That's it. So I don't need a big house. Now, many of you others might be renting for a different reason, like, you know, the housing crisis or the huge capitalist uh, destruction of the housing market, which was, uh, I'm not going to get into that because that starts to get a little political. Anyway, um, what I wanted to talk about, though, is that um, just because you're a renter and just because uh, you live in a city or for whatever reason you can't go off grid, there's other ways that you can conserve energy. And of course, if you know me, um, I like science. So I wanted to show you something, okay? So I might splice in some clips from the previous video I made from this. This is kind of a take two because I've had a better way to do things, okay? So let me show you this. Actually, hmm, first of all, I have um, many devices. Okay, so we've got like the cameras, right? The audio, um, we've got lighting packs for the, um, the um, uh, video lighting and stuff like that, right? That um, we use when we're doing um, the videos. Not only that, but there's all sorts of other things around my house that use batteries. Like for example, um, my little weather station here, or uh, my cell phone and tablet. All sorts of things that I have utilize power. All of those things uh, are charged on low voltage. They're like five volt, they're 12 volt, they're low voltage devices, right? They're not like my computer that's 120 volts and requires 400 watts to operate. Or, uh, you know, my laser printer over there, which, you know, that thing running uses 700 watts. So anyway, the point that I'm getting to is the majority of stuff that's battery powered can be solar charged without actually having to do something complicated. So let me show you this, okay? I'm gonna take you guys off of the stand here and we're gonna go for a little walk. Okay, so you probably remember this Dakota cell from one of the uh, product reviews videos I did. So I've got one of these guys left because I had to tear the other one apart and I still can't make it work. But anyway, I've also got uh, other packs here. These ones I make myself. Actually, I should bring a light over here. Hold on. Let me bring a light over here. There we go. Let's bring a light over here so you can actually properly see what I'm trying to convey. So here we go. I made this pack. Focus. Focus. Can you focus? Can we, can, can we come up focus? Will this thing let me focus? There we go. I have to tap the screen. That's cool. So anyway, uh, I've made little battery packs like this out of used lithium cells I've taken out of laptop batteries. You know, the same ones people are using to make uh, power walls and stuff, right? And I've got this charging station that I made here that will charge literally any kind of battery that I have. So we've got any kind of AA, AAA, C cell, D cell, 18650, anything. This will charge literally any voltage of battery. I paid like 50 bucks for it on Amazon. This will charge my Sony camera batteries. This one here will charge my uh, my big camera packs, okay? Now what I did here was I put a little watt meter, volt meter on it, okay? Which I also got on Amazon because you can't get these locally. Buy local first, folks. And then I put a little barrel connector on here. Now watch this. I'm gonna, I've got one of these packs here, okay? So here's one of the packs that I use, okay? I'm gonna tap to focus, I guess. Cool, I like that, that's neat. Okay, so I've got that there. So this is one of my packs, right? Now what I've done is I've used these EC5 connectors. You can use any kind of connector that you want, really. <laughs> And uh, I can take my barrel connector here and I can plug in and charge my stuff. Okay, so I've got like USBs on here that I can plug my cell phone and my tablet and stuff into to charge off of. Basically, I'm charging everything here from this 12 volt battery or this 12 volt battery here or this 12 volt battery here. Now let me show you guys how I charge these batteries, okay? This is gonna be cool, eh? I'm gonna take you guys outside. I can now turn off this light here to conserve resources because why waste energy? Let's go for a little walk up back. Okay, it X. All right, let's go up back here. Oh, by the way, these guys work great for charging your cell phone. It takes a couple of days to charge your battery to full, but uh, you put your pack in there and then you can use that for charging cell phones too. But I'll show you how I charge my cell phone. Well, actually, I guess I already did show you how I charge my cell phone. Let me take you back here. So out in the yard here, I've got like these little panels here, which I did a video on previously. So I use these for charging one type of my packs that I have, which I might actually combine all of these panels together. But this is the other one that I charge. So they're used for charging. So this guy here, I think it's a 100 watt cell. I think it's 100 watt. We'll find out. Let's, let's lift it up. Let's look under its skirt here. It's 80 watts. Okay, so this is an 80 watt cell, okay? So, I'm gonna get all the poop and stuff off of here. So anyway, this cell here, I leave it on the yard so they can get uh, sunlight. And I use it to charge things up. So like I've got this guy here, which I was using during the uh, power failures there that we were having. And uh, I just clip it on and I'm just charging it up. Now this panel here is an 80 watt. So it shouldn't cost you more than hundred bucks, even if you're getting ripped off. Um, these cells are typically worth about, um, I think they go for about uh, 70 cents or less per watt. So that would actually put this thing at around 50, 60 bucks if you got it at the right source. But realistically, when they get this small, the price goes up on them just because, you know. Um, so 
These guys here, you can probably get one for about 100 bucks. You throw it on in the yard, and this guy will chop up, uh, top up your cells. Like, um, that little 12 volt 10 amp hour cell I've got is a 120 uh, watt hour. So this will actually charge that cell within roughly an hour or so. Am I doing the math right? 12 times 10. Yeah, that'd be uh, 120 watt hours. No? Am I retarded? No. Yeah, because 10 times 10, yeah, 120 watt hours. So 120 watt hours. So with this guy here charging at 80 uh, watts, uh, within about two, three hours tops, I can have that battery fully charged. So. Then I can take my batteries back inside, use them to charge all my devices, my tablet, my cell phone, uh, my laptop, um, even my cameras and whatnot. So, you know, just because you're a renter or you like live in the city or whatever, doesn't mean that you can't use the sun um, to power your devices and conserve energy, save money on your hydro bill, or just help the planet in general, which we should be doing. So, um, yeah, I just figured you guys might find that really interesting, a little factoid for you today. Ooh, hey guys. Uh, you know, I thought of another great energy saving tip. So, checky here. So it's very hot in Ontario right now. Uh, currently 26 C outside. Um, it's 24 Celsius inside. Humidity, you can see the difference here, right? It is like an armpit outside, honestly. So anyway, um, what I wanted to see was that another neat trick for saving energy. Uh, if you don't have air conditioning or you don't want air conditioning, I've kind of split the difference. Um, my place is maybe 600, 700 square feet, okay? So anyway, if I go over here, let me just turn on some lights here. Alexa. Turn on kitchen. Okay. You know, expecting him, her to work is a very big deal. Okay, so anyway, what I've got here, this is our run-of-the-mill thermostat, okay? So now what I've done here, if you look closely, is I've turned on gas. Can you focus? There, there. Okay, so I've set the fan to on, okay? And if we go down to the basement now. The spooky basement. Woo! If any of you guys are born in the 80s, you're probably like me, you don't like dark places. Or basements, but my basement actually feels pretty comfy. Um, so here's a little trick that we have. Um, you can actually take, oh, it's really dark down here, sorry. Let's see if I can fix the white balance on that. Maybe? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's kind of dark, but anyway, you get the point. So what I've done here is the furnace. I've taken off the uh, the bottom panel of the furnace, the actual um, service port for the fan, and I've put a clip onto the fan here, which, or sorry, the, the switch here. And what that does is that stops the, uh, or it's a safety, so it'll actually keep the, uh, the fan running even when it's open. Now watch. Once that's done, you can actually take your filter and you can put your filter in place like so, and that'll keep dust and debris and things from getting into your furnace, okay? But now, I've also made this little filler here. This is all with instruction from one of my HVAC buddies. He said you take these guys here and you can actually put like a board in here to block the inflow from the upper portion of the house. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna take all the cold air from the basement here and it's gonna draw it up into the upper portion of the house. And that's gonna help you keep the temperature down. Cause your basement, I'm actually below grade here, right? So, I don't know, I'm about, this is mouth height for me right here. So this is about what, five feet? We're five feet below the ground. So, hey, I'm almost six feet under if I lie on the floor. <laughs> So anyway, uh, the temperature down here actually never really gets that uh, hot. It's usually around like, uh, I'm in Canada, so it's usually around 14 to 16 degrees down here. So on a hot summer's day, all the cool air is drawn from down here into the upper portion of the house. And then, yeah, it keeps me nice and cool. So the other thing which I actually did, by the way, this is kind of a cheater trick. Um, I actually took my air conditioner and I actually stuck it in the basement window. So it's a very small air conditioner. I think it's like 8,000 BTU or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, it's very dark, sorry about that. I should have brought a light with me. But um, yeah, I've got it down here in the basement in the window. And that is actually cooling the basement. So it's helping to cool the basement. So when the days get extremely hot, then uh, this will actually help keep the basement cooler, which as I just mentioned, gets drawn upstairs and helps cool the rest of the house. And actually, let me take a picture of the, uh, the uh, air conditioner, the way I've got it set up in the basement window outside. See here. I like sharing tips with you guys, right? Get outside here. All right, and there she is. This is my air conditioner, and it's uh, sitting here in the window and uh, cooling my basement, which in turn cools the rest of the house. Kind of a handy little trick, eh? So anyway, I just thought that'd be a cool little energy-saving uh, tip to share with you guys as well. Uh, especially if you guys live in Ontario, where you pay a $50 delivery fee for your electricity. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, have a great day. Bye. Mm, ciao, bella.